Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. So today we're going to kick things off with another one in my Handy Hint series. I'm sure we've all seen expensive fragrances in the store and just, just thought for a moment, wouldn't it be nice to just walk out and steal this if I could get away with it? Now I would never condone shoplifting or advocate it in any way, but if you were to decide that you wanted to steal something from a fragrance shop, uh, this is a hint for shoplifters. Walk backwards into the shop so that if you get caught by the store security when the CCTV footage is rewound you can prove you'd already left the store before the crime was committed. Hello everyone and welcome to my video on the top five fragrances from the House of Chanel. So recently I did one on the top five fragrances from Christian Dior and I guess Dior and Chanel are probably the two big fragrance houses in the world of designer men's fragrances. Most people who are really into fragrances probably are going to have their vote for their top men's fragrance designer house is going to be either for Dior or Chanel. There are some other great houses too but these two I think are the big hitters. So. One fragrance that's not going to make my personal top five, but I did want to give an honourable mention to, is Bleu de Chanel. Uh, I've been sampling it recently in the Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette variations, and I really have smelled it loads and loads of times in my time uh, of being interested in fragrances. I literally, about every one or two weeks, I'll spray this on myself or on a card in a store to see if I really need a bottle. And so far, I still haven't felt that I need one. The reason for me is that this fragrance is a little bit commonplace smelling. There are lots of other things that smell a little bit similar. It does come off a little bit generic, although I think it was one of the first of its kind in, in the way that it smells, and then things like Dior Sauvage have been influenced by it. Either the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum, I think, will be very popular and will get you compliments. Uh, they're great for people of all ages and in all situations. My reservation in, about it is that it, isn't, it doesn't have anything really unique or interesting to me, and I also don't want to be... I, I have a slight resistance to the, the fragrance that the lady in the boutique says, have you tried Blue de Chanel when I'm smelling one of the other ones that I'm interested in? So it's always put me off a little bit. This is the one they push so much, and I feel like it's the one that somebody might have bought for, you know, your friend who isn't into fragrances, his wife or partner has probably brought, bought it for them for Christmas. A lot of people have this one. So it's good, very popular. Try it out. It might really work for you, but it doesn't just it doesn't tickle my fancy as much as the other. So into my list. Number five, then, this is this was my signature scent for literally 10 years before I was a fraghead. 10 years, and it got me compliments. I, I would hope it did in that time, 10 years. Got me some compliments, unsolicited compliments from ladies. It's Allure Homme Sport. Allure Homme Sport. Uh, a, a, one of the best sports, modern sports fragrances. You've heard me go on about Paco Rabanne Sport. That's a weird, old-fashioned smelling sport fragrance. This is a sports fragrance, as you would imagine, they are probably going to smell. Citrusy, aquatic, a nice creamy woodiness in there. There isn't a lot to say about it. It's very fresh, and it has a certain classiness. And, and Chanel fragrances are about understated, tasteful classiness, and this one absolutely has that. So if you're looking for something fresh, something classy that you can wear as a signature scent. This one doesn't get a lot of buzz in the fragrance community because it came out in 2004. By the time the fragrance reviewers got going in around 2011, 2012, this was becoming you know, a bit under, it was no longer so fashionable. It was a bit obvious or boring at the time and it's never quite caught on again in the fragrance reviewing community. Chanel uh, Your Homme Sport Eau Extreme, I've tried. It's nice, but I prefer the freshness of this one. So Your Homme Sport, popular, likeable, classy, any age can wear it, and highly recommended. I've moved on a bit because it was my signature for 10 years, but you are not yet bored of it, and you may really enjoy it. I do rate this one highly. Number four, then, for me. Really love this one. Allure Homme Edition Blanche. This fragrance is always characterized by reviewers as a creamy lemon meringue pie kind of smell. I personally just get the lemon part of that, and maybe I get that there's a certain fizziness and a little bit of sweetness in there too. I think it's a great summer scent, and I think actually for me, I'm, I, God knows what it's described as on Fragrantica or Base Notes, probably a woody oriental or so, these categories never seem to mean a lot to me. Uh, and they can be described as one thing on one's website and one on another. To me, 
It's a citrusy cologne type fragrance with a really nice classy edge to it. It's probably got some of that Chanel jasmine, some of the characteristic aldehyde, a kind of fizzy note that Chanel do really well in all their men's and women's, well, a lot of their men's and women's uh, perfumes. And uh, yeah, really, really nice all round scent. Probably a daytime scent as is the Allure on Sport more than a nighttime one. It's not gonna pump out a lot on a big night out, but for an intimate encounter with a member of the opposite sex, perfect, very classy, impossible to dislike. Not quite boring because it's just got enough of a zingy zestiness about it and a creaminess that gives it some something a little bit intriguing. Performs quite well, not brilliantly. Neither of these two are brilliant performers, but they're okay. So great for subtle, sophisticated, classy work sense, but they're both quite modern smelling, unlike some of my next choices. Speaking of which, a number three for me, it's Anteus. Chanel Anteus from 1981 completely different thing this is an 80s powerhouse but if Chanel do an 80s powerhouse unlike Yves Saint Laurent where it really is bombastic and in your face with chorus Chanel make it classy and this is their classy alternative to chorus it's got some of those animalic kind of notes that chorus has it's got a lot of oak moss I think leather is really dominant but it's a very nice smooth leather in this one and we've got a little bit of bergamot greenness a little burst of sort of dark blue freshness there's a very dark blue bottle I don't think it's quite black but it Maybe it is black, but it conjures up a very dark blue kind of colour to me in my mind. I think there's clary sage in there as well, and it's got real depth, but a certain classy edge to it. So it's not rude and rough, but it is a bit of a powerhouse. Woody, masculine, musky, oak moss, with just a little bit of blue, herbal freshness, but a very dark form of freshness perfect for winter and autumn time suggest an older gentleman but don't be totally put off it if you're not in your 30s or 40s try it out be different it's a really classy fragrance i saw jeremy fragrance in one of his first reviews on Bleu de chanel he mentions that he actually thinks this is a really good fragrance but a sort of lumberjack fragrance so it's not going to appeal to his audience so much because that's most of younger people and he's not recommending it but i think jeremy knows a lot about fragrances he's a real connoisseur deep down and i i think he likes this one and it just doesn't tune in with what the message he's putting across. But I like his taste actually a lot. And uh, Antaeus, a brilliant fragrance from way back in 1981. Moving on from that then, at number two, it, we're going further back in time. 1955 saw the release of Chanel Pour Monsieur. Here I have my version of it, which is it's called A Gentleman's Cologne. For a time in the uh, in the UK and in the United States, the same fragrance was marketed under the name A Gentleman's Cologne. I think we're talking about the 60s, 70s, 80s. I'm not sure when they changed it back, which they did to Paul Monsieur, which is now available on your shelves. I'm not sure how easy it is to get in the States. Lania Smith did a good review, but he said you can't get it easily in the States. You have to go on a cruise ship or come to Europe. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but I know people in the States have it. This is not the concentre version. Uh, I've got a picture up on the screen that you're going to see now of how the bottle looks, the normal Pour Monsieur. I've got a vintage one, but I would find the modern one smelling very, very similar. Most people are going to say there's more real oak moss in this one, that kind of thing. It's probably true. The performance on Pour Monsieur is not strong, and neither is the vintage one. So either version, old ones, new ones, it's not a beast mode. It's a very subtle, refined, it's, I think it's described as a Chypre fragrance. It got five out of five in Luca Turin's famous book, on fragrances and he's a very fussy picky person and I would agree that this is a 5 out of 5 or a 10 out of 10 you get a fizzy, fizzy lemon you get a fizzy lemon sherbet kind of opening there's lemon verbena in there I think there's bergamot there's oak moss there's cardamom so there's a little bit of subtle soft spiciness so it's a really really good chypre uh, but to me similar to a, as they're calling it a gentleman's cologne it's your citrus eau de cologne type thing with a little bit more complexity and depth but very very refined and civilized smelling doesn't smell dated actually so some of the things like Antaeus from the 80s and, and fragrances from the 70s can smell more dated than the ones from the 50s because if you look back to the 50s fashions then were a bit more refined and understated and you could almost dress as you would in the 50s now and not look too silly up, up to a point whereas if you wore a typical 70s outfit or an early 80s one they were much more bold and sometimes you know they look a, a bit daft now and some of the fragrances seem a bit much too from that era but these 50s and 60s ones like Old Sauvage the original from Dior still stand up great today so Paul Monsieur don't overlook this one it's on the bottom shelves of the Chanel bit in your local fragrance place but it's a brilliant fragrance so what, I really love this one wear it a lot 
and I'm planning probably to get a new bottle too so I don't have to put too much more of a dent in my rare vintage one. Okay, number one then, my personal favorite from the whole of Chanel's men's fragrance line. Now, by the way, I'm only talking about designer ones today. I have tried some of the exclusives, but let's just keep it simple. It's Egoist, Chanel Egoist. This was released in 1990. It's not Platinum Egoist, it's the normal Egoist. Comes out with a bit of a marmalade orange top note. I think it's mandarin or tangerine. We've got a lot of smooth sandalwood and cinnamon and vanilla in this one. So it's spicy and woody with a little bit of an, a citrus, a sweet citrus note. Really deep and rich and classy. Comes to mind in the same kind of mood that I would wear for uh, Creed's Bois de Portugal. Doesn't smell exactly like that. It's rich, it's complex, it smells like a niche fragrance. It's again a bit old fashioned smelling. Well, not old fashioned, but it suggests a mature person, but it's not an 80s powerhouse. It was released in the 90s and I think it's a timeless classic. And it ties, it, it, it competes with a lot of modern niche fragrances to me in the quality of the smell. You've got to dress up for this one a little bit. You've got to be a little bit bold, it's a bit daring. It might be a bit risky if you're young, your friends, you know, it's not a massive compliment getter because it's a bit too complicated for some people to get. When I first smelled it, I wasn't sure. It took me a while to come back to it, but the best fragrances are like that. It's really complex. Really, you get loads of uh, stuff out of this. Every time you wear it, you'll experience a different thing with it. I mean, you wear it in different temperatures, different situations. Really, really fascinating and complex and rewarding fragrance to have and to own and to try. So my favorite from the House of Chanel is Egoist from 1990. Let me know what your favorites are. What did I leave out? What should I have put in? What did you think of my choices? And remember, whatever we're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.